As you recall, the LMS algorithm came out of a desire to solve the optimal uh, filter equations, the Wiener-Hoff equations, using gradient descent. But we didn't want to have to uh, know what our autocorrelation matrix was. We didn't want to have to know what the cross-correlation between the target and our input was. So we reformulated the uh, gradient descent as uh, an equation that had the expectation of the error times the input. Then we took a shortcut and we decided that uh, the instantaneous error times the input was <coughs> a reasonable estimate of the expected value. And then we decided that gradient descent was, wasn't all that it was cracked up to be. Let's only take one step instead of the iterative gradient descent procedure. What we ended up with was the LMS algorithm. And I demonstrated that we could take the LMS algorithm and over time it would effectively estimate those quantities that we avoided estimating uh, at a particular point in time. And implicitly then we would have something that should converge the optimal solution. Well, it turns out that proving this convergence, that uh, the limit over time of our weights is equal to the optimal solution is generally impossible. But we can try for something similar. Since we can't, and I guess you'll take my word for it, we can't generally prove that this will work. And in fact, as we start programming this up and you observe the behavior, we'll see that uh, it's not a surprise that we can't prove uh, absolute convergence. But uh, we can prove, or at least attempt to prove, what is happening in the mean. So we want to know, does the expected value of our weight approach the optimal solution? This would generally be useful except we can have an expected value that is uh, optimal, that approaches the optimal solution. But if it has an extremely high variance, then that's not very useful. So eventually, in a future lecture, we will also evaluate uh, the, both the expected error and the variance of the weights. That's in the future, though. Let's start by taking the expected value of our update equation, w m plus 1 is equal to uh, the expected value of w plus mu e n x n. So let's expand things out somewhat in the manner that we've done before by substituting in our expression for e n in terms of d and w transpose x, giving us this expression. OK. Well, to prove convergence, we need to get a handle on these properties. This one right here is rdx. So we know that that's a, a quantity that we know how to estimate and is not hard to do. This, on the other hand, is going to get a little bit harder. And to uh, demonstrate why, it's because w of n is actually changing over time as a function of x. So we have this x, x transpose, which we know how to deal with. That's the autocorrelation matrix, times w. So to see where this is coming from, I think it might be useful to illustrate uh, what's going on with the filtering. As you recall, we have d hat of n is equal to w of n transpose times x of n. Well, we'll use this then to update w of n plus 1. So w of n plus 1 is not the same as w. Uh, in essence, our wn is going to have been calculated from the previous x of n. So we should be OK, and they, these shouldn't be 
related to each other, but they are because, remember, this is going to be essentially W. I'm going to drop the N into dex here for just a moment on the Ws. This is going to be X of N, X of N minus 1, N minus 2, and so on and so forth, up to X of N minus P. Thus, the vector X has previous values of X, and W is itself a function of previous values of X. So now we have W that's a function of the vector X, and so this triple product becomes a little bit hard to deal with. So you should be used to it by now. We're going to end up making some approximations. We will note that, well, x, I'm sorry, uh, w is dependent upon previous values of x, but it's being multiplied by mu. So if mu is very small, the overall impact of um, this vector x on the current weight vector can, might be considered negligible. Also, if x of n was white, it was white noise, then we can also assume that these things are independent. So we will make uh, the assumption that uh, x and w are in fact independent. I know on the face of it this is crazy because w is a function of x, but I think we've made the point that at least um, w is a, it's not impacted too much by uh, the current values of our x vector. With our expected value of x, x transpose term brought out, and separated from the expected value of w of n in this manner. And finally, we just have our r dx over there. So this actually looks very familiar in that it looks like what we had before with our steepest descent, except that the only difference here is now we have expectations instead of just values of uh, w. To make that a little bit more apparent, we could rewrite this to factor out the i minus mu rx. We can now follow the same procedure that we did with our gradient descent and do our uh, axis shifting, centering, and rotation. And we come up with, now, we'll skip those steps, but they are just as before. We now have, just like before, an equation with our v's, which are the uh, centered and rotated uh, values of our w's. And we have the eigenvalues of Rx in the diagonal there. And once again, instead of just the straight vector V that we had before, we now have the expectation. Now that we have this, we're back on familiar ground. And we can see that this converges in the mean as opposed to straight up convergence if mu is greater than 0 and less than 2 over lambda max. But there's a caveat. Remember, before we assumed that w and x were independent of each other. Um, if mu is very small. 
because of this assumption, in practice, we want our step size to be much smaller than that. There are other reasons. It turns out if we're pretty close, if we're somewhere along, along the lines of mu is equal to 1 over lambda max, it will converge. But it's this mean and the expected uh, squared error or the, the variance that we're concerned about. At every single weight update, it's going to jump around. It's going to jump around because we don't have the true expected value of the error times the weight. What we have will be just one random value uh, from a, a sequence, if you will, whose, or a, a composite random variable whose expectation is zero, but it's not guaranteed that any value is going to be zero. In fact, it won't. And so the larger mu is, the more we jump around even when we're down around the final solution. We'll do some simulations later and see what goes on here.